Good evening, everybody. I'm Andy. I'm your host for the next hour. Welcome to Vapor Trails TV and welcome to Swath Confidential. This is the second episode and uh, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. I've completely forgotten what date it is today. Um, let me just have a quick look. It's the 28th. It all becomes a blur, though, doesn't it? It all blurs into one day, one lovely day of festivities, one very long, long day. Anyway, so I hope you're all well, and thank you for joining me tonight. Chat is filling up nicely. Welcome, welcome all. Um, I have got some hopefully entertaining VT for you tonight. I've been trawling through the Swath archives, and uh, I found some more video diary. I've found some interviews, which I know are consented, so you'll be seeing those. And um, lots of other good stuff as well. Um, I've got quite a lengthy VT tonight um, about the editing process which features one of our favourite, Mr. Dawn. And, um, yeah, some good stuff. I hope you like it. So, what did we all get for Christmas then? Anything nice? I hope so. I got a bottle of Southern... Ooh, there's the microphone there. I got a bottle of Southern Comfort, and uh, I've been enjoying it quite a lot. There's only half a bottle left. Mm. I didn't get any vaping-related stuff for Christmas. Um, I got quite a lot of Breaking Bad. Other TV shows are available. But I got quite a lot of Breaking Bad stuff, um, which, uh, considering the situation in the EU, that seems quite appropriate. Anyway, so um, I've got loads of devices with me tonight. Um, I won't be talking about any of them. Ooh. Uh, I've got my Darwin out again as a special Christmas treat. Recharged it, haven't used it in a little while. And uh, I've got a rebuildable on it. And, and, you know, I'll just be chatting along with you. Haven't got any sort of stories that spring to mind yet that are, are humorous and involve micros and hedges. But we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. And impressively, I've actually typed out a run order tonight. So uh, that normally means things are going to go horribly wrong. <laughs> anyway, so yes, uh, let's just talk to you all in chat for a bit. Um, welcome to Swaff Confidential Chat. And without further ado, 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 the Southern Comfort is very good. I'm going to play in the titles. Lovely. Right, so I was trawling through the Swath archives the other day and I found um, both a video diary and a an interview, which I knew I had. Um, it was with the German uh, vaping group that was at the workshop in the EU, the very first workshop that we that I did a video on initially. Um, the, the idea of that interview is to include it in the in the larger film um, and uh, I have got a little bit of VT about that right now coming up coming up coming up and where is it here it is and uh, yes let's play that in now and then we'll talk about it afterwards shall we driving to Cardiff at the moment um, and it's the 7th of May. It's the day of the workshop. Um, it is quarter past nine. And uh, we, at the moment, probably have a crew in Brussels driving to the EU building to get some shots of uh, the EU building. Some... It's rather an impressive building. But more importantly, it's there to get 
interviews with the German members of the vaping community. Two guys are going to speak for five minutes at the e-cig workshop that Linda McCavan is chairing. This workshop was organized by the by myself and the committee because we wanted we're discussing how to regulate e-cigarettes. Evidence as to the gateway potential. I think clearly, for example, the fact is that unlike patches, unlike sprays, unlike gums, these products are designed to look like cigarettes. Even if we take the so-called study into consideration, we have to compare as follows. One milliliter e-liquid has up to 40 times less nitrosamides than a pharmaceutical nicotine gum and up to 15,000 less than one cigarette. It's really difficult because on the one hand we had a few people that supported us but uh, most of the people in the parliament had the, the opinion that it's, it's to be either a tobacco product or a pharmaceutical product or in the worst case even both. They are not seeing it yet as a less harmful alternative. We don't yet know if it's going to be streamed live. What we will get is we will get uh, interviews with the two German guys and um, some very nice shots of the EU building which we can then intercut with other people's interviews including MPs, vapors, store owners, vendors, you know, everybody really. Although we found people telling the same lies, we also found some people that were behind our back, they understood our situation, our ideas of replacement to save 600, somebody said 700,000 possible tobacco cause death. So it was worth the trip, yes. So um, today's a big day. It hasn't yet all kicked off. Had no phone messages or anything, no emails. So it's all looking pretty good. It's all looking pretty good. There we go. Yes, that was sort of the first international shoot for SWAF. And um, I was working in Cardiff, as you saw there. I was driving to and from Cardiff every day. And uh, I was contractually obliged to do that. And so I booked a crew, found them on Facebook. Facebook's very useful when you're doing a film. <laughs> and, um, yeah, sorted it all out and booked them and paid for them by international bank transfer. So that was all very exciting. Um but it was at that stage where we just started. We didn't know what the EU were going to offer up. We didn't know that there was going to be a live stream. Um, luckily, there was, as you saw in the video that we released and the bits that were included in that video. So it was all very much of how can I cover this, but might not have anything to illustrate it. So I thought, send a crew over there. They could get shots. They could um, get nice stuff and then get an interview with the German guys who were lovely and um, interview them that way. So I prepared a list of questions, sent them to my, f my crew and um, the German guys said that they wanted to do the interview in German. The crew that I'd booked, I asked them, do you speak German? And they said no. So we had French speakers asking Germans questions in English. So it was all a little bit sort of difficult for everybody involved. It was easiest for me because I got the footage back, which was sent to me um, via uh, file transfer upload, uh, like Dropbox. Other file services are available. And um, we did it all that way. So it was it all worked fantastically apart from that period that you saw me in the car going to work and that day while it was all happening I didn't have a clue a scooby doo what I was going to get back or whether it was going to work but luckily vapors being vapors and people who point cameras at people being people who point cameras at people they um did a fantastic job and those are the rushes so 
the idea for those rushes, those those shots, those images, the shots of the EU buildings, which are quite spectacular, um, have been used throughout the film. And the interviews that we got with the German guys are going to be included in the large form film. So um, that was a little sort of preview, as, as, it, as it were, to the bits that we're going to include when we explain the workshop section in the large film. So there we are. That's it. Right, let's just go to chat and see what you're all talking about. Um, let's see. Yes, um, hi-fi stud, Dave Dawn. Um, and he's not alone. Half a bottle of gin gone here. Yes, tis the season to be merry and drunk. Yeah. So, <laughs> talking about the content. Yes, yes. Well, hopefully there is some. And there's more coming up. Where are we? Looking at my VT, I'm bang on, bang on time. So what we'll do is we'll go to a quick sting and um, we shall see you on the other side of the ad break. Now. iVapor and iVapor Elixir proudly sponsors Swath Confidential. Nice. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to part two. Yes. Yes. Ha. <sighs> so I might have mentioned in the pre-show, um, which was quite brief because I had a few technical difficulties with the broadcasting system. And, um, you know, I got lots of things for Christmas, including a cold. So pardon me if I'm a little bit <clears throat> sniffy and coffee today, but that's what my kids gave me for Christmas. A virus. Brilliant. Thanks, kids. Anyway, so, um, yes, I, yesterday, um, after the whirlwind that was the festivities of Christmas Day, settled back into the old edit chair and um, did a little bit of a VT. Now, it is quite long, but I hope it illustrates what the editing process is like. Now, the videos that you see on the Swath channel do take quite a long time to put together. So um, this is to illustrate what goes in to editing them and the actual process of cutting them. I did it last week, but this week I've gone into a bit more detail. And also this VT includes an interview with Jeremy Mean and um, some other people that we know and have seen before on Swaff videos. So without further ado, ado, I've done it again. It's the Southern Comfort. It makes me say ju. I don't know why. Anyway, so uh, let's go to that right now, and uh, yes, here we are. Uh, let's play this in now. Hello, everybody. Andy here. I'm in the edit mode of my studio setup, um, and um, in front of me on the screen here, you can see that I've got the eSig Summit footage up. And as I said last week in part one of Swath Confidential, um, I'm having some issues with consent from certain people. 
But what I thought I'd do is I'd just walk you through the steps of actually putting an interview together, of which um, I've got several, um, which have consented. Brilliant. So I'm going to put a couple together, some that I've watched, some that I haven't. I'm obviously going to condense certain parts of this video because um, otherwise you'd all go crazy sitting here for like four hours. Hey, and this is only a one hour show. So I'm going to start with our friend Dave Dawn, who was there at the ESIG Summit in London. My cameraman Andy was there filming. I was unable to attend because I was at work, but that's what the swath money allows us to do, is send very talented people off with a list of questions, and some of them they've made up themselves, and um, interview people. So uh, at the end of the day, um, Andy grabbed Dave Dawn and interviewed him. So let me just scroll down here and find his interview, which is right at the end. You can see on there it's got a couple of markers and stuff, but um, there he is. Now I've already got a piece marked up there, so what I'm going to do is just drop that onto the timeline. And then we can have a play through that. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never talking. been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e-cigs, apart from a very small section of the public health community, has been together debating where e-cigs stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction that they can bring to the whole of the UK and Europe. Right, so a very short, concise answer. Fantastic. Bit of a pause at the beginning and a little bit of a stumble. So let's see if we can sort them out. It's all very simple and I'll just walk you through it. Right, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to dual mono, which basically means that um, it's got one track of audio. And uh, I'm also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in here and just uh, reduce the background, background noise by, I don't know, 67%. That should help it a little bit as well. Here we are at the Royal Society. A bit too much. This I've never been to before. A bit too much. Before. Where? Perfect. Okay, and then what we're also then going to do is we're going to um, we're going to make it just a little bit louder by about five. Basically, everybody that's got anything to do with e cigs the, the, the problem with filming is that you go somewhere and you don't know necessarily where you're going or, or where those people are going to be able to talk to you. So you just grab what you can. Um, radio mics, which you can just see right there on his uh, jacket, um, it does help a lot. But still, it's a, a, a beautiful stone-built interior building. So it's going to be echoey. It's obviously busy because it's a summit. Um, so it's just a case of getting the best you can and then um, leaving it to the editor to try and sort it out. On the most part, the audio on this project has been great considering the circumstances and the crew, because normally you've got a sound man. But most of the time, apart from the um, vendor visits to Totally Wicked, we, uh, we did it single person shooting and recording audio. That's the cheapest and most efficient way to do it. But um, for certain shoots... I deemed it important enough to have a sound man. And I say sound man because he's a man that records sound. So the sound man, Andy, and the cameraman, Andy, same person, has done a very good job. So what I'm now going to do is play through this um, interview clip again. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before. All good. Where? Here we're entering the pause. It would be fine, but I can tighten that up a little bit. A place I've never been to before. Where? Where? So I mark an in there. And he's back there. Cut that out. Boom. Gone. Let's play it through. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before. Where? Basically every... Basically. So again, I'll just zoom into the waveforms and you can see the waveforms here. They're, they represent the audio. There's the... And then if I cut that out and I nip that out, and I bring that. So that now looks like your normal waveform without any pauses, without any hmms or anything like before, that. Where basically everybody that's... The basically is still a little bit weird. So I just add a frame. Where basically everybody that's got... Any basically, that's good. That is good. Where basically everybody that's got anything Not to bad. do with these... Okay, so now that has generated basically a problem. Basically everybody that's got... A place I've never been to before. 
where basically everybody that's got any... He sort of jumps. That's a jump cut because I've joined two bits together. Like that. So now what I do is I go to the top of this and I know for a fact because Andy is a star, um, he got some shots of the outside of the building. Some lovely pool focuses. Andy's using a Canon 5D Mark II here. Beautiful camera, beautiful lens, beautiful operator. Thanks Andy, good job. So there's a lovely pool focus of the Royal Society. Boom. So that's what Dave's talking about when he's saying that, isn't he? You will notice as well on that clip, there's some work going on outside or something. So we'll want to ditch that, but we'll do that in a second. So I can drop that on the top. That's gone over the top there like a plaster over a cut. So what I do is I drag that down. That's the audio drag down. Put some audio fades in here. Drag that down to about minus 60. Place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e -cigs. So that covers that cut. If I drag that that way a little bit, so it'll start earlier, we get this awkward situation where Dave starts talking and then it'll quickly cut to the uh, outside of the building. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place... That's nearly... We just need a little bit of time to see Dave so we know who's talking. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e Boom. Done. Apart from Great. a very small section of the... Okay. So, uh, we'll then use a shot of this. Some vaping in the hallways. There's some people in there that everybody will recognise. Um, and we will drop that on there. So we're building up a little sequence over what Dave's saying now. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e cigs apart from a very small section. That shot was a bit quick. So I'll just drag that through. You can see Clive Bates walking around in the background there. So that illustrates what he's saying. People who have stuff to do with e-cigs are there. And then I know for a fact there's a little bit of a stumble coming up. So Very we'll just small play section through. of the public health community has been together debating where e-cigs stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm could reduce. There it is. Now, everybody, when they're doing an interview, stumbles. I've, I've cut interviews with some of the best presenters in the world, and they mess up. What you're seeing on TV isn't really a true rep representation of what happens. Everything you see on TV is edited. Everything you see, unless it's live, that is the only time that you see someone who is doing it then and there. But on this occasion, Dave got his words a little bit mixed up, which is fair enough. And in normal conversation, people do it all the time. I do it right now. See, there was a pause. Okay, so we can make this sound a lot better. We can get to the points a lot quicker. That's what editing for SWAF we're doing. We don't try and edit stuff to misrepresent. Mis, mis <laughs> somebody needs to edit this. We don't edit to misrepresent. Let's get back to Dave. Let's nip that little um, stumble out. Right. So here we are. Here's Dave. He's chatting away like Debating a star. Where is he stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction? Harm reduction. So that's what he wanted to say. That's what we'll make him say. In terms of the harm reduction. Harm. He's not quite finishing the word harm. So I'll just give him a bit more on that. Just a bit of that on there. The harm reduction. Now there we go. There's that pause left to get lost again. But but the uh, terms thing is... Of the harm reduction. It's created a little bit of a... In terms of the harm reduction. So cut away is required. Right, so he's talking about a debate. So there's some... Uh, there's a, a group shot. I'm not allowed to use any of the audio from that shot, unfortunately. Um, and I won't. So what we're looking for now is a, a shot of a crowd. So we're looking for a shot of a crowd. Russia's here. There we go. So it swings around, ends up on the uh, screen with the E6 Summit thing. So that supports what Dave's saying. We just drag that onto there and we, we plop it onto there roughly. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e cigs apart from a very small section of the public health community, has been together 
debating where ESIGs stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction that they can bring to the whole of the UK and Europe. So we want to keep Dave talking um, and we want to still see him. Um, so what I can do is I can do a little split screen, keeping in mind that I'm going to sort out that audio edit in a bit. Right, so there's the cut just there um, where Dave... Uh, in talk, terms of the talking, harm reduction. Talking. That's what we're trying to cover up. So what I want to do is I want to select that, drag that across there, and then this, this is part of the sort of swath style. Um, but we've used this a couple of times. Um, and then that then creates a picture in picture, which at the moment Very looks like this, which looks a bit odd. He's been together debating where ESIG stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction. So I'm going to grab that picture in picture effect. I'm going to edit and then paste attributes. So Dave has now, it looks like he's disappeared, but no, he hasn't disappeared. He's behind here. Hi, Dave. So this is what allows me to do now is we can now make him a bit bigger or smaller or upside down. All his pens fell out of his pocket then. Because <laughs> really what we're looking at is we're looking at Dave talking, telling us where he is. So what we now want to do is we want to go to Dave. We're now going to crop the um, left-hand side of him, drag that across, pop him there. Now, in an interview, I always like to have a bit of looking space. So if, take my shot, for instance. If I was doing an interview, I, I would be here and I would have looking space that way. Blah, blah, blah. I am Andy. I am telling people how I edit SWAT videos. So I've got looking space that way. If we now look at Dave, he's lost a bit of looking space. So what we're going to do is we're going to give him his looking space back. So he's just got, got a little bit of looking space. And then drag that back across. So we've seen Dave shortly at the top. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e -cigs, apart from a very small section of the public health community, has been together debating where e -cigs stand in terms of regulation. Also what you'll notice is Dave has changed colour. He's beautifully exposed in the right colour and he's not yellow, but on, the, on his picture in picture he's yellow. We can change the exposure, we can change the colour, we can change the uh, the actual colour balance. So we can make him green, we can make him purple, we can make him sort of all different colours in the world. So you can really achieve a very nice look. But we don't need to do any of that with FCPX or other editing software is available. What we can easily do is we can just go balance. Now that makes Dave the same colour as he is there. Because again, sometimes when you're rushing around getting an interview, the camera's on the wrong setting, you get back and your footage is a little bit blue or a little bit yellow. If you get yellow, that means your your um, your colour balance is set to indoors. If it's blue, it's set to outdoors. Now, if you're going inside and outside, then you're going to get end up getting footage that is either blue or, or yellow or just right, depending on where you are. So you can manually adjust that on the camera. But, uh, you know, this is very subtle, but it's very easily fixed. So here we go. So here's our finished. You'll hear a couple of little audio glitches, but I'm going to sort those out in a little while. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with ESIGs, apart from a very small section of the public health community, has been together debating where ESIGs stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction that they can bring to the whole of the UK and Europe. Boom. So there's his little statement. Still needs a little bit of tidying up, but there's the idea. That's 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 the mechanics of putting a little sequence together like that. Right. Another big part about video editing is the music. Now I get some of my music for the swath videos that you will have seen from a website that's called Video Blocks. It's basically a massive clip archive that um, Swath subscribes to monthly, and it allows us to get sort of stock footage and um, music and things like that. Bit too cheesy. That might work for um, title music or something. 
bit cheesy. Sorry. That's quite good. It's got like a mix of sort of... That could work. That could work. Let's take that. Let's download that. So what we've got is the sequence that we worked on. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e-cigs, apart from a very small section of the public health community, has been together debating where e-cigs stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction that they can bring to the whole of the UK and Europe. Right. So uh, let's try it now with our first choice, and I think you'll see what I mean about music making a difference to tone. Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e-cigs, apart from a very small section of the public health community, has been together debating where e-cigs stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction that they can bring to the whole of the UK and Europe. Obviously, we're not going to put that music on, are we? Because that makes everything sound a bit silly. But that's just to sort of illustrate what an important part music does play in the whole thing. So there are lots of things to consider. So I found this other track, um, which I think will be a little bit more suitable. Let's have a look, shall we? Here we are at the Royal Society, a place I've never been to before, where basically everybody that's got anything to do with e cigs apart from a very small section of the public health community, has been together debating where e cigs stand in terms of regulation and in terms of the harm reduction that they can bring to the whole of the UK and Europe. See, it just adds that sort of little edge of cool, little edge of cool there. So that works, that works. So, um, yeah, so that's basically the basics, the real basics. I've got probably about another hour's work just to do on that bit, just to get the music mix right, just to get the the pauses right in terms of where we put those cuts. There's a little, couple of little audio clicks in it as well, you know, and then build the rest of the video. Factor into the, you know, the mix as well, the fact that we've got interviews that we can't use because of consenting, you know, all that sort of good stuff. Anyway, so let me just go through now and play you um, some some of the interviews that we can use. And I'm not going to edit them. I'm just going to play them to you. So here we go. Um, first of all, let's start with Mr. Clive Bates. We can see him here. He's being interviewed. Okay. Yeah. Just give us a quick overview of what today's about. Um, we're at the okay. Uh, we're at the eSig Summit, and what we're trying to do is air some of the issues about whether these products are safe, whether they're good alternatives to cigarettes, how they should be regulated and everything. It's been a very interesting debate so far. I was going to ask you, how's it going? What, what's, what, what have you kind of got out of what's been going on? It, so it's been a very interesting debate so far. We're starting to see um, you know, uh, some of the arguments made for why you should regulate these products as medicines. Uh, I think you've also seen the arguments why you shouldn't. We've seen a lot of data on how safe they are and basically the, the overall conclusion when you, when you strip aside the thousands of charts and words that have been spoken is that they're pretty damn safe compared to cigarettes uh, and we shouldn't be too worried about the safety side of it. Um, so the question is what should we do uh, to try and get the maximum possible public health benefit from these which is to get as many smokers as we possibly can to switch. And do you feel there's people here today also speaking that maybe haven't quite the, the right view when it comes to uh, one of the one of the great things today is that there's so many different views and different types of people in the room. So we've got government and regulators, we've got e-cig companies, we've got public health people, we've got public health NGOs. Within the public health community, we've got lots of different views. Um, and so basically everyone's having a right ding-dong to try to work out what the right thing to, to do is. So far it's all been very good natured, people have been making great contributions, um, people have been listening respectfully, uh, and, and actually I think it's working really well, it's a really good conference. So there we go, you know, it goes on, there's more. Do we want to hear it? I think we do, don't we? Let's play it in now. The last question really was to ask you, um, do you think vapors are winning the fight? There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that vapors are winning. 
they have the truth behind them, they have the wind in the sails, um, they, there is a great, amazing, fantastic, disruptive innovation that has emerged over the last few years, probably mainly because of improvements in battery technology. And basically, this is a technology we can run. It will, it will re revolutionise the whole public health in the 21st century. And we've just got to get rid of a few objections for a few people who are uncomfortable about it. And then we can get on with saving hundreds of millions of lives worldwide uh, over the next few decades. See, the man knows how to sound bite. And that is a classic sound bite. So that will definitely end up in the edit. He is consented. We know that. Others are as well. Um, let's keep it going. The next question, last question. Yeah. I promise to see if you can get the lunch. Yeah. Um... Classic thing as well. Sorry to stop it again. But classic thing is to say it's the last interview, interview question, and it's not really. People often warm up. Really, um, what's the next fight ahead of the papers? Um, the, the next fight ahead for Vapors, it's definitely all not over in the European Union. Uh, and once we get a sight of where everyone's coming from, people are going to have to pick up those pens, get on those typewriters, get on the phone, get on Twitter, and they're going to have to start again with their MEPs, their MPs, their governments. Everybody's going to need to hear again uh, around the end of November and beginning of December um, from Vapors. Um, we're persuading people, uh, you know, we're, we're winning the arguments, people are starting to understand how valuable this technology is, but we cannot stop now. It's all going to come to a head in mid-December and there's going to be a bit of intensive work still to do. Once we've, once we've got the right result in the EU, then it's on to the world. We've got the WHO, the Food and Drug Administration, hundreds of regulators worldwide. But if we win in the EU, pretty sure we'll set some very important norms for the rest of the world. So there we go, um, Mr. Clive Bates speaking his mind at the eSig Summit. There were some other people speaking their mind as well, and I'm just going to play this in. This interview is consented, we, and you will hear the consent play out now. It's Mr. Jeremy Mean. Okay, and if I could just ask you to introduce yourself and say who you represent. I'm Jeremy Mean from the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. Okay, that's brilliant. And um, the first question was going to be... Um, in a previous public statement, you said there is no ESIG on the market that would qualify for marketing authorization at the moment. Is that a ban on existing products? Or? No, we're, my, our main driver, the, the government's main driver for taking action, is to ensure that safe and effective products are available to help smokers to cut down, to quit, and to reduce the harm of, of smoking to themselves and to those around them. So that's the, the real aim here. We are concerned about the quality of products on the market. We do want to see it improved. We don't want to ban products. We want to encourage better ones. OK, that's brilliant. And so what one of the concerns is, obviously, would the cost of medicinal regulation be prohibitive to small companies and therefore open the market just to, you know, big tobacco companies? Mm. Well, tobacco companies have moved into this sector. So regardless of regulation, they are already there. What we want to do is to ensure there are good quality products, whoever makes them. We don't think the price of the cost of regulation should be so burdensome that it will remove products from the market. We want to encourage a diversity of products um, to be available. Um, most of the pharmaceutical industry is actually small and medium sized enterprises. We think it should be perfectly possible for smaller companies to operate in this sector, in a regulated sector. Sure, I think one of the concerns, that, and I had it voiced today, was just in regards to obviously someone said they applied and there was a, a massive application form and what the funding that they would require to pass um, the pharmaceutical kind of protocol was excessive to what a small business could afford, so I don't know if that's something you thought about and going forwards. Well, medicines regulation is thorough. It does look at where the product comes from and how it operates, and most importantly, that it does what it says, that it's effective in helping people to cut down and quit. But small companies can and do operate in this sector, and if you look at over-the-counter medicines in your supermarket, in your corner shop, there are lots of small companies operating in this sector, very successful. Okay, that's brilliant. And the last question I had was, um, how is the MHRA funded 
Okay, the MHRA is funded by fees from industry. It's consistent with government, wider government policy that the regulated sector should fund regulation. So we charge fees for looking at products, for inspections uh, and for ongoing maintenance of the product. And just to cross that kind of funding, is there any bias towards any industry? Um, absolutely not. The, the, um, the, the regulator tries to be very transparent and very open about the action we take. We're accountable to ministers and ministers are accountable to government. Um, so we're absolutely not biased towards any sector. Okay, brilliant. And um, can I just ask your permission to use that clip as part of the Smoke Plan Fire documentary? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So there we go. Consent was given. <laughs> Um, Andy, who shot the interview, uh, was only given um, a short amount of time um, to get what he got there, um, you know, and we, we we continue to build bridges to try and get more, basically. So, um, yes, rest assured that some of that will end up in the edit um, against stuff that is, is yet to be shot as well. So, um, yes, interesting stuff. An interesting exercise, eSig Summit. It's going to be an interesting edit. Um, interviewing. You see, we've seen quite a few interviews in this. Dave Dawn at the top, which goes on a lot longer than you've seen. We've got um, Clive Bates, which you've seen all of. You've seen uh, Mr. Mean, um, which you've seen all of. And you saw his consent being given. And um, also, uh, that leads me on to the next thing. Yes, and checking he's got the right camera. The next thing is going to come up right after the break. And we'll also probably reflect a little bit on, on the Jeremy Mean uh, video, which chat has got quite a lot to say. So uh, let's... Let's let's do that now, shall we? Eye Vapor and Eye Vapor Elixir proudly sponsors Swaff Confidential. Nice. Welcome back. Welcome back, lovely people. Yes, um, you will have seen in that um, VT uh, with Mr. Mean being interviewed um, a classic example of doing an interview. And uh, we Vapors might be interviewed coming up on the 11th of January. Um, we are planning a little get togethers. Um, so if those groups of people were confronted by a camera or in general, if you're confronted by a, a camera, um, I'm just going to run through sort of my top tips about giving an interview. Um, it could be said that in a previous VT, you witnessed some people, naming no names, sticking to their message. Now, that is a key point of, of doing an interview, is being able to steer the answers that you give to the answers that you want to give. And what is said in an interview is up to you they will ask you a question whether you answer it is up to you i mean answer the question but you know i've prepared a few little things here that um i refer to my paperwork okay first of all never wing it so prepare preparation know roughly what your message is and stick to it now preparing you know practice makes perfect it may seem silly it may feel silly but prepare. Talk to a video camera. 
let a loved one or a, a person in your life talk to you, ask you questions and practice steering it back on message. Whatever that message may be, could be about, you know, deforestation. Apply your own message. <laughs> um, yes. So it's important to be able to steer the message back to the one that you want to put out and focusing on that, knowing that message is key. So that is learning how to bridge an interview. So use sort of topic, use um, techniques to deflect any attempt to railroad the interview. Say, for example, if they, you know, they're interviewing you. Let's say, for example, they're interviewing you about electronic cigarettes. Let's just say, for example, um, you know, someone who's being interviewed might be asked the question, um, but they, they surely are a gateway product to um, children. Now, if your message happens to be the fact that the vote that occurred isn't necessarily the success that you wanted, you can use certain phrases to steer the answer that you're giving that they're going to end up using and editing in the similar sort of way that you saw me doing. You use terms like, you know, before we get off that topic, let me just add and then continue. Or... Let me put that in perspective. The vote that occurred. Do you see? So it's just steering it back. And I think we, we might have seen, may, maybe, uh, an example of somebody doing that earlier. Yes. OK. Also, nothing is 100% off record. So fine. It's important when you meet the person that's going to be interviewing you to get them on your side or at least, you know, strike up a relationship but remember everything you say is being noted down it's nothing to worry about but just when you're breaking the ice break the ice as you would unrelated to the subject matter become break the ice just just you know be 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 a human being to the other human being but when the interview starts when the camera's rolling you're on and when you're chatting, you're still on. Notes are being taken. Just little tips about general interviews. Could be about anything. <clears throat> right. A a appearance, body language, also very important. Be relaxed, be professional, be smart, be all dressed the same way. It's up to you. It's all important. You know, that's all part of it. That, that's all based on the breaking of the ice thing. And, and the, the, the way you put yourself across is also part of your message. Um, what else have I got? Uh, break the ice, got that. Um, body language. Stay on track with your message. Um, reporters, as I said before, can use what you say. The only person that's going to say something is you. So as long as that's on message, everything will be fine. And that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it, really. I mean, I mean, a lot of people get sort of phased or or freaked out when a camera's pointed at them, but it's it's important to not look down the lens. They won't use something that you know. That's part of the appearance thing as well. You're having a conversation with the person that's talking to you. It's just a conversation, but what you say is important. Now that might seem stressful thinking about what you've got to say. But if you've prepared, going back to the first point, then there we go. Now, if you don't feel up to being interviewed, there are other ways to get your your story out there. Now, people who aren't on camera, or as I think Dave Dawn um, said, elected gobshite, um, they they will. You've got your role to play as well, as we've talked about before. You can um, phone up the people whoever you need to be phoning and or uh, upload a video of what's going on outside and then send that email email that link to different people um, to draw attention to what's going on that will make it a story it's making the story and all that is part of it anyway so if anybody else wants any advice you, you can you can message me on the uh, vapor trials forums um, on twitter you know, I'm happy to help. Happy to help get that message across for whatever interview you happen to be doing. Right. I've completely forgotten where I am. Where am I? Right. 
So, um, yes, that's 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 it. OK, so we are now going to take a look at the another Brussels video. Um, this is the Save eSigs visit to Brussels. We were asked by Save eSigs to do a 15, 17 minute, I think it came out at video that um, illustrates the fight. So I put together some swath stuff and joined it all together very quickly. And uh, that video, your video, the video that you helped um, fund was shown in front of the world press. So right now I'm going to play in that video and then afterwards um, we'll be talking about it a little bit. Here we go. So it's uh, two thirty. Um, I started this at about midday, and um, it is about it's seven minutes long, and it's the Save E Sigs video, um, in which uh, I sent Andy Marsh, cameraman extraordinaire, to Brussels to cover what was the handing over of a petition by Save E Sigs. Now, this scene is going to be in the big film. Um, and it starts with Dave Dawn outside his hotel. Um, so here you go. Enjoy. I was ever nervous. Um, this is a presentation to the world's press about why e cigs ought not to be made medicines in the tobacco products directive. And it's important that they get the right message, but there's a really good panel involved. Um, hopefully we'll get the message across. The best case scenario today is that the world's press discovers what e-cigs are really about and gets behind what we're trying to do, which is prevent them from being made medicines. And what's the kind of worst case scenario for today? Worst case scenario is we make a complete mess of it and they get the wrong message. But that's not going to happen, not with the panel that we've got today. We're here, hopefully, to save E6. And you may be wondering why E6 needs saving. Um, Smoke Without Fire is a video campaign, I suppose you would call it. It's going to be ending up being a feature length documentary. Um, and the makers of that documentary have provided us with some footage that might help fill in the gaps for those of you that are unsure why E6 need to be saved. Medicines cure people or treat illnesses. Uh, E-cigarettes are products. They're products that people choose to use instead of smoking tobacco cigarettes. If this goes through in 2016 and we can't have them, then it's going to put so many people smoking again, it's unbelievable. I'm just a vapor, but we've got experts in their field, and these are acknowledged experts. Um, from your left to your right, Jacques Uzek, Clive Bates, and Professor Jerry Stimson. I'm going to let each of them introduce themselves and speak to you for a few minutes just to let you know where they stand on these. Uh, the film we've seen is pretty biased, I would say, kind of just what's actually going on. It leaves out some important aspects of how what the regulation actually entails and how it's being made. Um, I can see many of the points that you're making, but do you really feel comfortable sort of putting your voice behind this drive that seems to be really distorting what is actually happening. There's, a, there's an awful lot of propaganda from the people who do favour medicines regulation as well. They, they're sort of wishing away these problems about availability in pharmacy only. They say, well, of course, national lawmakers can change the medicines regulatory framework in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain if they want to. Yes, they can, but they're not going to. The move is quite powerful and it does present a position from the from the, the point of view of e-cigarette users. But no, I, I endorse the general thrust of that argument. I really do think that there's Article 18 in the TPD, which as amended would, would say that all e-cigarettes have to be treated uh, under medicines regulations in, the, in, in respect but for instance, of the country. And that, I think, is, is hugely harmful in terms of reducing availability, making these devices much harder to, to get. Also, from population studies, we are seeing that it's not uh, attractive to youngsters, besides those youngsters who are already smoking. And I think this is a positive thing. I would prefer my child to use the electronic cigarette instead of the tobacco cigarette. 
such product should be actively promoted on the open market to compete with tobacco products. They will need health authority endorsement, tax advantages, and support from anti-smoking movement if tobacco use is to be gradually phased out altogether. The attendance at a press conference is always the sort of tip of an iceberg because we've sent a lot of briefings around to, to media and everything. So there were the there was a few journalists there and they were from good quality newspapers and that's what counts. If they write intelligently about this, they will lead the debate. So it's good to have the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal and the big agencies there. If they write sensibly about it, then the others will pick up on that. How did, that, um, how did you feel that went? I think it went quite well. Uh, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, ITV and uh, a great many other journalists there. I was really rather pleased to see such good numbers. Yeah, that's good. How many people were there in total? Do you think? Uh, it looked as though there would be between 15 and 20 journalists. I was a little too nervous to count them, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and also, I was listening very intently to what uh, the rest of the panel had to say. Yeah, it was an interesting uh, discussion, wasn't it? It covered just about every base it's possible to cover, yes. Yeah, do, do you think they'll be listening to you? I really hope so. Certainly there were a lot of notes taken um, and some very searching questions asked that I thought were answered very well. Um, if the reporters are completely unbiased, then it should work really well. How did you feel about the question that the girl from, I think it was, was it the Wall Street Journal asked? Or was it the New York Times? She yeah, asked quite sure. a kind of biting question about the biasness of the film. Well, one has to ask what does she expect when uh, the film is there in, to a large degree in support of e-cigs at the presentation in support of e-cigs. Of course it's going to be cut to be in support of e-cigs. Stupid question. And um, would you, were you expecting any MEPs there at all? Is there anyone that represents Parliament? Would you have hoped they had been there? Um, given that it was a press conference, there probably wasn't really any need for MEPs to be there and we're meeting up with them very shortly. That's where we're off to now. Thank you very much. So this is the petition from across Europe, from all of those thousands of people who are now using e-cigarettes and obviously what we want to do as members is try and influence to get the best result. Most of us here do not believe that the European institutions should be involved in this in this fashion or should have to dictate whether people want to have e-cigarettes. Uh, people can buy alcohol over the counter so there's no reason from our point of view why this is not just seen as a consumer product so people can buy e-cigarettes. It's a lot better for them than tobacco. So this is what we will do. We will continue the fight to allow our consumers and our voters to have the choice to buy their e-cigarettes where they wish to buy them. Thank you very much. The company that's in my region, e-cig wizard, they've pointed out that some people this has helped get off tobacco. And so let's take a look at how this is helping hundreds of thousands of people. And that's you know, why I'm here to support this campaign today. I think they should be widely available because they're helping people fight the perils of lung cancer. I think the danger is that you end up with uh, far less products on the market. Um, and so perhaps some people who've successfully switched from tobacco to electronic cigarettes might find the product they've chosen no longer available and they may not like the other options that are available in the future. And my nightmare scenario is that people who've successfully stopped smoking tobacco and switched to e-cigarettes end up going back to tobacco and that would really be a tragedy. So there we are. That's the last VT. That's uh, We're running out of time here on uh, SOS Confidential Episode 2. I've got a whole lot more. I can't promise, but I'm, I might might be able to come up with another one if, if you'd be interested. Um, probably not next week, but um, in the future sometime. Anybody's up for that? Yes, all those videos haven't made it out in their entirety onto YouTube and stuff like that, but... The intention is to include them in the larger project. So um, as we were seeing there, people were making comments that 
now knowing what's happened have different meanings um and that is what we're trying to action and swaf is trying to cover as well so um expect to see camera crews as well covering what's happening on the 11th that's all planned as well um someone tweeted me and uh, i'm about to play in the credits because that's uh, my time is up my time is up i'm actually technically overrunning sorry guys sorry um but uh, somebody tweeted me and said that in the credits uh, their name had slipped into a different group that's just me and butterfingers and i haven't had a chance because of the christmas period to change the end credit roller please rest assured if you see your name in the wrong category that is just me copying and pasting into the wrong place in a hurry trying to get the show ready um it won't happen when the perks are delivered kickstarter looks after all that um and for the final film it will be triple checked and triple checked again right so big thanks to chat big thanks to everybody behind the scenes um right on the sun on the sunday sunday the 5th of january we've got dave's tackle box that is your next show on vaportrails.tv. So I hope you have a very happy new year. Um, and uh, thank you for joining me in chat. And uh, if you're watching on demand, tune into Vapor Trails Live. It's great fun. Right. So without further ado, I'll play in those slightly incorrect credits. You can play Spot the Name. Spot the Name. See you later. Vapor and iVapor Elixir proudly sponsors Swaff Confidential. Nice.